Amber, the product of ancient tree resins becoming fossilised, can be an absolutely incredible medium for preserving prehistoric life. Organisms that were small enough to become trapped in tree resins millions of years ago have been kept frozen in almost perfect condition for a remarkable amount of time, resulting in some truly spectacular discoveries. Well, as it's worm week, I thought we'd take a look at some of the incredible fossil discoveries that have been made of worms found in amber. The revelation of finds such as these is actually incredibly important to helping us understand details of past ecosystems that are no longer present on our planet, as amber has the capability of preserving animals that would never usually get to be fossilised. One of the best examples of this can be seen with the worm phylum of the nematodes. These creatures, also called roundworms, are some of the most abundant animals on the planet, being found in soils across the world in extremely large numbers. Despite this great abundance though, they're very rare as fossils, so the fact that some of them have been preserved in amber that dates up to 40 to 50 million years ago is absolutely astounding and incredibly important for understanding past ecosystems. Most of the nematode fossils found in these amber deposits, which come from the Dominican Republic as well as the coast of the Baltic Sea, belong to a group called the Myrmithids, a parasitic grouping of these worms which infect insect hosts. The fossils of these parasites are absolutely mind-blowing. A paper describing some of these finds that was published in 2012 shows how remarkably well preserved these specimens are, and explains what's going on here. The reason that these nematodes have been fossilised, and that soil living species are generally so rare as fossils, is due to how they live, boring into insects and other invertebrates during their juvenile stages, feeding and growing inside them, before then eventually emerging. It was then by pure chance that some of these infected invertebrates happened to get stuck in tree sap millions of years ago, preserving their parasites too. One of the amber fossils in the paper preserves a prehistoric spider along with its relatively enormous worm parasite. The worm has completely emerged from the spider's body, and is thought to likely be a late stage juvenile that was about to exit the spider anyway, but then left earlier than it should have done when the spider became trapped in the resin. Incredibly, despite the spider being just over 2mm long, the worm is almost 18mm in length. The abdomen of the spider can also be seen to be transparent, indicating that the parasite had pretty much used up all of the nutrients from this unfortunate host. Other parasitic nematodes from these amber deposits show that they infected a variety of invertebrate species, including caddisflies, blackflies, moths, and stick insects. But worms weren't always the ones to be feeding on other organisms in the past. They also fell prey to many species, as another amber fossil shows. This fossil preserves a kind of annelid worm called an enchytriad, a creature that sort of looks like a small earthworm, and that is still around in our soils as well as oceans today. This kind of worm is not a parasite though, and they spend their lives on the ground and in the soil. So how did it end up on a tree to become stuck in resin? The key here is the fact that next to the worm is preserved a long-legged fly. The authors explain that observations of modern representatives of these animals have shown how these kinds of flies will prey upon enchytriad worms when they come to the surface, sometimes tearing them in half as they take them out of the ground. Well, that seems to be what's happened here, as only a fragment of the worm is actually preserved. So this one amber piece illustrates a remarkable predator-prey interaction that's been preserved for over 34 million years. Another kind of prehistoric worm that's been found as amber inclusions are velvet worms. These worms, technically known as onychophorans, are an amazing group of animals that still survive today, and have an ancestry that potentially extends as far back as the Cambrian period. Well, sort of, as it's possible that the Lobopodians, which includes creatures such as the famous Hallucigenia, are a stem branch of the lineage leading to the velvet worms. Velvet worms are actually very closely related to the tardigrades, or water bears, as well as the arthropods themselves, and are capable of shooting out a kind of sticky slime from a pair of highly specialised limbs near the head as a form of predator defence. Fossils of these organisms from Dominican and Baltic amber deposits were described in a paper published in the 90s, preserving in remarkable detail many characteristics of the anatomy that showed similarities to both modern velvet worms as well as the much older lobopodians. This included the anatomy of the legs, with these amber worms lacking the feet at the ends of the legs that modern onychophorans have, instead having a leg structure more reminiscent of Cambrian lobopodians. These amber worms also preserve clear evidence of these slime glands and papillae that are used to shoot the substance out from the body, showing that this adaptation, which is used as both predator defence and to acquire food, had already evolved by this time in the Cenozoic. So, amber fossils are clearly invaluable resources to the study of ancient life on our planet, and are able to preserve incredible glimpses into past ecologies and even interactions between organisms that would otherwise be lost to the depths of time.
Worms, as such significant animals that play a crucial role in the health of the planet, are therefore very exciting to find as fossils, and Amber allows groups of these creatures that could never normally be fossilised in other ways to be preserved for millions of years. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about these amazing Amber Worms, and I really hope you've been enjoying Worm Week 2022 so far. Still to come is a video on an Icelandic cryptid worm, giant prehistoric predatory bobbit worms, and a video on my mum's channel One World about how worm poop can be used to help our polluted planet. Also be sure to check the description for a link to the University of Warsaw Faculty of Biology's Worm Week event page, where there are details in both Polish and English for all the activities going on at the uni as they also celebrate this amazing week. Thank you all so much to our Patreon supporters too, including our Dinosaur Tier supporters, Amanda von Nordek, Archianthus, Ari, Clara Middleton, Daniel Ingraham, Dhruv Srivastava, George Fodgetek, Greg Silvernail, Corey Peterson, Loxy Poo, Mendicant Friar, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Nicole Bueno, Persian Boy, Ralph Balzac, Robert Thomas, and Steve Bradshaw. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful worms that surround us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.